Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have a stash buster video. We are going to use, I think, five or six different things to complete two, nope, three art journal pages. And we're gonna start with our gel print journal. Now this is a journal that I made from my gel prints and I will put a link to that video if you wanna see how quick and easy it is to make this kind of journal. Now the second stash that we're going to use are these borders from napkins. And I will put a link to the video where I talk about how to harvest those. Now these gel prints, there's a white border around them because the eight by 10 gel plate isn't quite as big as the copy paper. So you end up with that border. So on this one, I'm gonna use the napkin borders that I harvested from the napkins to fill in those sides. So I'm just going through my stash of them and matching it up basically by color. What goes together? What would be a good coordinating? Now, thumbnail sketch here, I'm taking off the excess plies and gluing them on to copy paper so that they are opaque and you can't see what is underneath that if there's paint. So once that's dry, I'm going to cut them out and we are going to attach them to the side. Here I used a curvy ruler to cut them and I just glued it with matte medium. Here they're straight up and I matched this one with the plaid kind of gel print and this one with the dots. Now, now that the borders are there, they are directing the next steps. I've got some colors that I want to introduce to the gel print and maybe some patterns. On this one, I'm using that off-white color. I'm using unbleached titanium and I'm using this dot stamp I'm putting the paint on with a brayer and just stamping. If you're looking for a good all-purpose stamp, I can't more highly recommend a dot stamp like this. You'll get tons and tons of uses for it. In fact, this is half of the stamp. I cut it in half, so I have two. Now that that's done, I wanna continue with the circular type motion and I'm using this Retroverse stencil and Prussian blue and just putting some of this on here just to add a little bit of interest. And I'm putting it in three areas. Odds always look more appealing to the eye. I'm using a piece of paper to mask off so I don't get any of this stenciling on the borders that I've put on. When you have things built up in your stash, it is so easy to pull things together and use them. It makes the art journaling process a little quicker because you have things at the ready and that's one of the important things check out my stash builder playlist if you want more i'm just shading around the outside edge at this time i really wasn't planning to finish these pages i just got them to the stage of being almost finished so i'm shading around the borders and around the paper so let's move to the second background now there's a the brighter yellow than what's on the border. So I am using yellow oxide here, watering the paint down and just giving it a wash of color just to make it match more closely the color that was on the gel print page. Now I'm using some bubble wrap and the red oxide or burnt sienna. It's a very close to the same color depending on whatever brand of paint you're having. I'm just stamping that on. I apply it with a makeup sponge and I'm not looking for perfect stamping by far. I want it very grungy. So every time you make one decision, it just seems to lead to the next one. Those napkin borders, because there's napkin there, also have texture and it's a little bit 
raised because it's an, another le level of paint. Now this stamp comes from a Stamperia stamp set that I recently got it from Ninny's Napkins. And this is the grid one. In a while, you're gonna see it off to the left-hand side. It's a stamp set that was created by Vicki Papineau. Create Happiness, I believe the set is, but all of them are winners. It's a recent addition to my stash, but I, I absolutely love it. This one, it looks like the mesh of the burlap border and that's why i chose it the burlap border kind of dictated that and i did that with black acrylic paint again brayering on i grabbed the bubble wrap and i decided you know i'm just going to stamp on top of the napkin borders just because something's in our stash in a certain way doesn't mean we can't tweak it and alter it so here we've tweaked the color and we've also added some patterning to make it go with the whole page I'm absolutely loving this background with this border. And once again, I'm just gonna do some shading around the borders and around the edges of the pages. Usually I do this at the end of an art journal creation. But you really can do it at any point in time. And you can see that stamp set to my left-hand side there. There's a compass, the letters, some numbers. They're all winning stamps and I love them all. So on this page, I wanted to add some red and blue that the, there was blue in the borders that I put in. And I grabbed this stamp. It's actually the leaves of a flower stamp that you would build up. There were several stamps together, but you know what? Don't worry about what it is supposed to be. Look at the lines and the flow. I'm turning it around and now it's just an interesting motif on my background. And I've added some curvature to what was a very linear page with the border. This is another stamp that is kind of like a postage mark stamp with those wavy lines. And this is something that's in my stash. I have a collection of these stamps that I've picked up over time and I'm not really using them, but I want to start using them on my pages. So I'm looking at them differently, not as focal point stamps, but as mark making tools. So I'm gonna count this as something to, that I'm using from my stash. We will be zooming in shortly. Apologize for the camera angle here. And then I've got a swirl stamp and I'm just adding that with the Prussian blue, just to add a little bit more blue into the background. You want the borders to work with the background, to work with everything. And then pretty soon we're gonna select focal images that are working with what we've created. So every, every decision you make leads to the next. Every step leads to the next. And once again, as you've seen me doing with the other two pages, I am shading around. I try shading with the Prussian blue and I do go back in with the black. So there is the first background. This just is such a happy celebra celebratory type page. Again, I'm loving the look of this, all the elements, how they work together and this one. I am really happy with all three of my backgrounds. So I dug out all my focal images from my bin and my sentiments to finish it. Now my latest sentiment pack is the Courage sentiment pack and that's my 2023 word of the year and I wanted to do a page with a theme of courage at least one page every month. So this is my page this month. So I keep them in a binder, flip through, find the appropriate quotes, and then I can print them off and at the ready. And for this one, I'm actually using four. These ones I bubble cut. I gave a white border around it so they stand out a little bit more. And then I cut three rectangular ones that I'm just having come out of this magazine girl. 
And of course, I chose this magazine girl because the scale of her works on the background, but also she's the colors that she have go well with what I have already developed in the background. And I'm not going to lie, it took a little bit of time of going through, flipping through my bin of focal images that were waiting to be used to find the perfect one that matched the color, the theme of what I had going on. I'm gluing everything down with fluid matte medium and magazines, as you know, are often very shiny. The matte medium dulls them right down and gets rid of that shine. After drying it, I grab my angle brush and I'm just going to shade around the girl first on the magazine part and then on the outside, which is on, on the page. I'll also be shading around the sentiment. I've never used four sentiments in this way and I really like how this came together. If you're not a subscriber, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, click on the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. If you have questions, I'd love to hear them. Now I decide I'm going to splatter with some gold paint. I think that will go well with the colors. And once that's dry, I'm going to move on to the next page. So this one, I'm auditioning a few of the focal images. I've got these doodle flowers that I had made in a stash builder episode. And I could put several of those. That goes really well with the motifs in the background. This fairy, which is a free printable. I like the shape of the wings with that red stamping that I did. This girl is dark blue, but right now she's the least of my favorites of all this so far. I've got some red boots, thinking spring, but the scale seems to be off. This puppy, I like the, line, the lines on the bag that the puppy, puppy's in kind of goes with everything and the colors really work. I also have this magazine girl. And again, the uh, neckline really matches the red stamping. But I'm going to use the puppy in a bag. He fits, there's still room for my, for a sentiment. And the colors are just, just right. So this is my pet talk sentiment pack. And again, I keep them in a binder. I can flip through. This set has the sentiments with the black background with white letters and white background with black letters. And once I print them out, I cut them up and I keep them in this plastic pouch. And I go through that and they're just already printed off and ready to go. So I chose the one every meal you make, every bite you take, I'll be watching you. This is not what pets do. Gluing it all down with my fluid matte medium. I'm going to overlap the sentiment on top of the magazine. And there was this green stripe, but there is no green in my background. So I grab my distress crayons, my blue one, and I am just rubbing it and turning that green stripe into a blue stripe that's gonna more closely go with my background. That's how easy it is. Distress crayons are great to add that little pop of color at this stage of the game. And then I'm going to do the shading. So when you have lots of things in your stash, 
and you build it up and you have special stash builder sessions where you do that when you sit down you can do multiple pages at once now this is a really quick easy page i just like the starburst there they just seemed such a happy little page i have this little lamb it was a digit digit stamp that i got from elena i can't remember her name i'll try to remember and put it in the description box i cut that out and I'm just gluing it down. It's just on copy paper. And I found the sentiment that I had auditioned for another page that says girls just want to have fun. It just, it just fit, felt like this all worked together in my mind. Once everything is completely dry, I wanted to make the black lines a little bit better. With the photocopying and whatever, it got faded. And I just wanted to make them a little bolder. So I'm using my Posca pen here and just going all over and doing that. And I'm doing it now as opposed to before, before I cut it out. Because I didn't have to wait for it to dry completely. I didn't want it to reactivate. The Posca pen, once it's completely dry, is permanent but if it's not completely dry it i've had it, it uh, smudge and i didn't want that to happen i was contemplating coloring the heart red and then maybe adding some red detail to the background would you have done that let me know also let me know which page is your favorite the lamb the puppy in the bag or the courage page. The rest of this border or rest of this um, gel print journal, I am going to do borders on them. They may not be napkin borders, so stay tuned. So there is girls just want to have fun. Every meal you make, every bite you take, I'll be watching you. And be bold, be brave, be you. And until next time, go get creative.